Okay, so we were at somebody's house and I found this book. 2,500 American phrases and idioms. And I was like, yes, I'm going to read it from cover to cover and memorize them all so I never get it wrong again. <laughs> and then my husband walked in and said, hey, let me test you on some of these. I'm just going to pick random ones and see if you know. I didn't do so good on that test. But then my son walked in and said, Mom, but if you knew them all, it wouldn't be funny. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> well, there's no risk of that ever happening, so... Um, I'll tell you something. Sometimes it is so subtle as the difference between British English and American English. You know, <laughs> when I lived in Ukraine, um, we had students exchange program and Americans lived in our families for three weeks. And we were taught British English, you know, I can't, for example. And then we hear Americans speak, I can't, for example. <laughs> so one Russian girl says, you know what? I think if you want to speak American, you have to, every word that sounds like ah, you have to pronounce it like ah sound. So the next morning, three American guys were sitting by the bus, and she comes to greet them. Hi, gays. <laughs> you know, my... <laughs> My English teacher back, back there also, he went uh, for training in London and he was renting a um, house from this lady. So when he was leaving, she said to him, next time you're in town, come knock me up. <laughs> so, you know, and One of my favorite stories, it has to do more with English grammar than anything. Um, a freshman comes to college and he runs into another student who happens to be senior in English major. And he says, hey, do you know where the library is at? So the senior turns around and says, well, first of all, you do not end the English sentence with a preposition. So ask me again correctly and I'll tell you. So the freshman gets pretty irritated, says, okay. Do you know where the library is at, idiot? Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes what happens is, is I'll hear a phrase or something and I'll just assume that I know what it means or I'll give it my own meaning and it's okay for a while until I actually use it somewhere. Um, because a long time ago in the movie I heard a woman saying something like getting laid and I thought that it meant you know when you're very tired and you want to lay down <laughs> and I mean that was okay for a while until one day at UTD we were working as a students group on this assignment and they wanted to do another page of the project they asked me and I said no, I'm too tired. I just want to go home and get laid. <laughs> yeah, you had to see their expressions. But, um, now, that day I did learn what it actually means. So. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's another story. But. Um, <laughs> But anyway, and the funny thing, there was one Russian girl told me a story and I thought it was funny and I was like, I'm glad I know this, I won't make this mistake myself. Well, little did I know. And it has to do more than anything with two words that sound similar in a foreign language. Um, she was dating an American guy and his parents purchased a new condominium. So he invited her over and she looked around and she said, oh, I love your new condom. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I thought it was funny, but then uh, a little while later we were moving out of apartments and I told my boss, you know, my family is looking for a new condom.
Uh, he was like, I don't, I don't need to know this. Why are you telling me? <laughs> you know. And I also learned that I should not make up my own words because it may actually exist. <laughs> you know, I, I used to collect certain kind of magazines, and so one day my husband said, Helen, why do we have so many magazines at home? Why do you collect all this junk? And I said, well, I like to collect junk. I'm a junkie. And um, it's interesting, one lady shared with me something about sign language she was learning. And uh, somebody, as she was learning, somebody asked her, um, do you like football? And she said, yes, no. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, I like it a lot. I watch it on TV all the time. Now, I, I can tell that some of you know what it actually means because, <laughs> yeah, two, well, for those that might not know, two fingers actually doesn't mean football, it means having sex. And, <laughs> and so she said, yeah, I like it, I watch it on TV all the time. You know, you, you just gotta get, gotta get your fingers right, so. Um, now, I will tell you though, what is really bad practice is to use a Russian word in an English sentence. I mean, even if you don't know the English word. Because sometimes what is a totally normal word in Russian language may actually not be such a good word in English language. And I'll tell you, for instance, there is a word in Russian, which is a perfectly normal word. It stands for uh, choir, where people sing. And it's a three-letter word, whore. Now, I know it doesn't sound that good in English, but um, this uh, Russian lady, she was working at the store, and they had different shifts. So one day, American colleague asked her, she said, well, where is your friend? She's not working today? She said, oh, no, she couldn't come. She's at the whore practice. <laughs> And um, the last story I'd like to tell you today, um, this man shared with me, he was working with two Vietnamese women. And so they were in the office and um, the women had to come to his office to do some kind of paperwork. So one of the Vietnamese women called him from her cubicle and she asked, would you like to do me first? Or would you like to do her first? Or would you like to do us together? <laughs> and he was like, I don't have the energy to do something together. Um, anyway. And. Uh, <laughs> and um, in conclusion, I'd like to say. <laughs> Thank you guys for being so hostile. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Hospitable. That's what I was, I was trying to say. Hospitable. I always get those mixed up. Thank you.